Thank you. Voilà. Sorry, no film. Thank you. Congrats, Novak. Where do you rank you. this title among your career um, successes? One of the biggest ones, uh, of course. I knew that uh, going into the tournament and I mean going into the match, especially today, that there's history on the line. But I try to, you know, focus my attention and my thoughts into um, preparing for this match in the best way possible to win, like any other match. Um, of course, I, I would like if I say that I didn't think about you know uh, the finish line that is right there, and then one more match um, is needed to to win a trophy, a historic one, of course. Um, but my team has created a good bubble around me, so we've uh, you know did a, we did a, I think a great job into just staying in the present moment and. Performing as uh, as good as we wanted to, and of course, when I saw his forehand going wide, um, I, I felt a huge relief, and I was overwhelmed with wonderful emotions. And uh, yeah, I'm very very happy and very proud of it. Yeah, congratulations! How does it feel to be the greatest male player in history? Well, uh, thank you. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say that I am the greatest because I feel it's a, I've said it before, it's a disrespectful towards uh, all the great champions in different eras of our sport uh, that was played in a completely different way than it is played today. So I feel like each uh, great champion of his own generation has left a huge mark, a legacy, and paved the way for, for us to be able to play to play this, this sport in, in, in such a great stage worldwide. So um, I leave the, those kind of discussions of who is the greatest uh, to someone else. Um, you know, I've, I have, of course, a huge faith and confidence and belief in, for, you know, um, to myself and for everything that um, that I am and who I am and what I'm capable of doing. So uh, this trophy obviously is another confirmation of uh, um, of the quality of tennis that I'm still able to produce, I feel. I've said it in the beginning of the season that Grand Slams are the biggest priorities uh, on the checklist for not just this season, but any season, especially at this stage of my career. And, um, you know, if someone told me I would win first two slams of the year, I would sign it right away. Um, coming into French Open, my record on clay was not good. I was not playing well, not performing well uh, in the tournaments on clay prior to, to Paris. But uh, as soon as I came here, I just felt different, you know, in a positive way. I felt that I have chance, very good chance against anybody in best of five. Uh, and I, I know that most of the guys feel a lot of pressure coming into best of five match on Grand Slam against me. And that's exactly, you know, how I want them to feel. And that's, you know, it's a good thing that you have that kind of, you know, in a way, mental edge. Um, but it's, it's just um, so much pressure and emotions and, and expectations from my side personally and from everyone else that, you know, once it's finished, once everything is done and dusted, it's just uh, incredibly uh, satisfying, of course, if you finish with a trophy, another Grand Slam trophy, and, and at the same time, it's huge relief because, you know, I'm just glad it's, it's, it's over because you have to, you know, deal with kind of those pressures and expectations on a, on, a, on a daily basis and kind of live with yourself in your mind and trying to handle all the nerves. Um, so, of course, I, I feel incredibly proud, uh, fulfilled. I'm so uh, blessed to be able to share it with my family, uh, my, my, my kids, uh, my wife, my parents, everyone who has been supporting me in this journey. Um, of course, journey is still not over. I feel, you know, if I'm winning slams, why, why even think about, you know, ending the career that uh, that already has been uh, going on for 20 years? 
so I, I'm, you know, I still feel motivated. I still feel inspired to play the best tennis on these tournaments the most. You know, Grand Slams. You know, those are the ones that count, I guess, the most in the history of our sport. So I, I look forward already to to Wimbledon. That, uh, that three-player standing or table that we've kept in our heads of slam totals used to be 16 to 9 to 1 at the start of 2011. Now it's 20, 22, 23 with the one going all the way to 23. What do you think about when you think about that sweep of time? Pretty decent uh, <laughs> 12 years, I must say, for, um, for me. I mean, I've managed to... Uh, I would say manage my own body and my own emotions and uh, the team of people around me in such a way to be able to peak uh, on the most important tournaments in the world, which are Grand Slams. So, of course, uh, when you talk about history, people mostly talk about the Grand Slams one or the amount of time you spent at the number one rankings. And I managed to break the records of in both of these uh, um, in both of these statistics which is amazing and of course I know that um, it's not something that is guaranteed or is not something that uh, you know will just happen just because people think that you've done it once so you can do it again and I also am aware that uh, even though I don't like to, to think about the age, or age is just a number. It is, sounds like a cliche, but I really feel age is just a number in my case. But truth of the matter is, and reality is, that my body is responding differently, so I have to deal with more things physically than I have had maybe in the past, you know, maybe five to 10 years ago. I was recovering much quicker, or, you know, just, uh, or didn't feel as much pain in the body as, as, as and the beating that, that I'm that I'm feeling today. But <laughs> in the end of the day, uh, you have to go, you won't walk victorious through the finish line, and uh, that's that's what we've done. So yeah, it's uh, it's amazing and seeing this trophy here that uh, also for me symbolizes a great battle that I had with, with myself, uh, mostly you know of course with. Uh, all the great players in, in Roland Garros, that is one of the four greatest tournaments, but for me, by far the toughest one of the four to win. Because, um, you know, kind of coming into clay season, I don't know what to expect. Every single clay season year in the last four, five, six years, it's been uh, kind of a lot of ups and downs, some brilliant matches and some really bad matches. Um, and this surface is so um, challenging and it's just, it makes you, you know, work for every shot uh, double as much than on any other surface. I mean, that's you know how I feel at least. Um, so it's it's kind it's kind of symbolic in a way that I won my historic 23rd here in Roland Garros. It just uh, makes it even sweeter and even greater knowing what it takes to win a Grand uh, Roland Garros for me. You know, it's just. Not to take anything away from, of course, the winning of any other slam, but just Roland Garros is a, is the highest mountain to climb for me, I think, in my career. So that's that's why it's even more satisfying. Novak, congratulations. Um, a, a lot of us in here are, are focused on the fact that for the first time ever, you are the the leader in the men's singles Grand <clears throat> Slam titles race, and I just wonder, it's been so long. You've been chasing Roger, Rafa, and they've had that that honor for many years and does it hold any special significance for you now that you are there all alone for the first time? Uh, well, the truth is that I've always, you know, compared myself to these guys because those are the two greatest rivals I ever had in my in my career. And I've said it before, you know, many times that they, they have actually defined me as a player and uh, all the success that I have, uh, you know, they've, they've contributed to it in a way, you know, because of the rivalries and the matchups that we had, and and uh, countless hours of um, thinking and analyzing and w what it takes to win against them on the biggest stage, you know, for me and my team. It was just those two guys uh, were occupying my mind for the last 15 years quite a lot, uh, and. Um, 
in a professional sense. <laughs> and, um, and, and so, of course, it, it's um, amazing to, to know that I, I am one ahead of both of them in Grand Slams uh, uh, with Rafa, uh, but at the same time, everyone writes their own history. So, um, you know, I, I still think that um, everyone has a unique journey that they should embrace and, and stick to. Um, but of course, having the three of us with Andy, of course, as well, that we cannot forget, um, in the last 20 years, it's kind of reached the golden era of the men's tennis, and <clears throat> as people like to call it. So I'm really grateful to be part of this this group um, of, of guys. Hey, Novak, um, congratulations. Uh, I see your family's here, and you were talking about dealing with the pressure. Can you tell us what you I mean, what did you do yesterday uh, before all this, and what do you think you'll be doing tomorrow and in the next few days? Well, I skipped practice yesterday. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a story of a Grand Slams for me this year. You know, I, I, I think I practiced only once uh, in the days between matches in Australian Open. Uh, there, I had. A little bit of a bigger reason to do that because I was, you know, I was dealing with an injury, so I, I needed every single hour necessary to um, recuperate and, and and be able to treat the the leg and, and be able to perform. Uh, here, I haven't I haven't dealt with uh, haven't dealt with any big injury, but you know, I dealt with a lot of um, exhausting hours on the court, and and uh, I just felt that sometimes. Excuse me. Less is more, you know. With my team, when we talk about, you know, what is the priority after my semifinals match, we've all agreed that the biggest priority is to recharge and and recover and get as much as hours of rest and treatment and maybe some specific exercises and fitness that would just uh, keep the tonus of the muscles and uh, and then in terms of hitting the ball you know I, I will not forget I will not forget hitting the ball you know in, in in one and a half days so and and I think that you know that that worked well obviously um, so yesterday yeah, I had par parental duties um, I had um, I had some time in the in the forest, in the nature. I love, you know, walking around uh, in the, in the in the national parks or forest or the woods. You know, just having this tranquil time. Uh, Watch Champions League finals as well, and um, yeah, had a good, had a good sleep and just did all the all the chores, all the things that are part of my routine in order to you know rest well and prepare well for for the match. And what about uh, your question? Was what will I do in the next days? Uh, I mean, now it's it's going to be, uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess, time for celebration and fun. Uh, I think I, I miss that, to be honest. You know, uh, we've been too serious for too long. So now a uh, little bit of relaxation, spending some quality family time. And uh, well, I don't have much time to be honest because the grass season is around the corner. Actually, for me, it's going to be only Wimbledon in the plans of playing on grass. Um, so I'll move to to London quite soon, actually, and then train and get ready for another Grand Slam. Hi, Novak. You, you spoke on court about belief and the importance of that. Where did you learn that? And could you describe perhaps an instance where you struggled with that and you didn't believe and how you were able to push through that? Well, uh, my upbringing uh, was probably different to most of the other players from my generation, you know, uh, going... Uh, uh, Going back to 90s when I was four or five years old and we had a couple of wars. Uh, Serbia had embargo. Uh, I couldn't travel for quite a few junior tournaments. Um, so it was a lot of adversity uh, and very challenging times for everyone uh, in, in my country. And uh, my family was uh, on a very low budget, uh, but they still 
my parents still uh, decided to, to support me um, in my dream, which is you know to become a professional tennis player and hopefully win Wimbledon and be, be number one in the world. And uh, <clears throat> you know, 95 plus percent of people would be laughing at them, were, were laughing at them, and were discouraging them to spend. Uh, whatever is left over from the family budget into such an expensive sport and you know coming from the country that had almost uh, no tennis tradition it was uh, extremely challenging and uh, the, the chances of me succeeding were very slim but I was fortunate to uh, encounter some very important people uh, that have affected my journey as a professional uh, athlete and development as a human being in a very positive way. Uh, those were Yelena Gencic, you know, that um, I like to call her my tennis mother. She passed away about 10 years ago, but she was an incredibly uh, big influence on me, uh, on and off the court. Uh, she was a true mentor and uh, she worked closely with my parents that, uh, you know, uh, gave basically her space and uh, permission to to spend a lot of time with me you know also when we are not training on the court so i used to go to her home and we i've said this story many times but we did many different things that uh, were kind of uh, <clears throat> i would say shaping my mind uh, as 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 a human being but also as a professional as a a young player who dreams of becoming a professional and i and, and she i was only yeah, seven, eight years old, and she really had me, you know, watching these tapes of uh, all the best players, both male and f female at that time. Uh, had, you know, I had to know exactly why is a certain shot hit in a certain time, on a certain surface, etc., etc., from the very young age. So she was treating me very maturely, and she, you know, she thought that uh, it's never too early to start, you know, with this kind of... Uh, mindset and, and development and then she taught me also the importance of uh, uh, relaxing and listening to classical music uh, reading poetry and uh, singing and uh, reading and uh, breathing consciously and, and so forth you know so she she was uh, definitely uh, one of the most impactful people I ever had in my life so to that's a long story answer to your question but yeah I think that belief um, aspect uh, came a lot of course from my parents first and from her from Nikki Pilic as well who was my tennis father who still is my tennis father you know he's still training <laughs> a few hours a day in Croatia he's 80 plus years old uh, one of the the most um, persistent uh, people for and passionate people for tennis that I've ever met in my life. So I was very lucky, very lucky. I must say you must have luck in life. Um, um, I was very lucky to encounter those two people that really, they were working together to kind of shape me in, in, in a person and a player that I am along, amongst, along with my parents, of course. So uh, yeah, my father, um, my mother is, is a rock. She's an uh, incredible woman that kept family together in the toughest moments. And my father is an uh, incredibly driving force of the family, someone that has instilled in me such uh, power of belief uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, positive thinking into like, achieving goals that is beyond uh, beyond any, any, you know anything that or anybody that I have ever met, you know he he is he believed so much uh, that I you know because he 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 never played tennis so no no one played tennis in my family so he had to ask people who are experts who are knowledgeable in the field in the in the, in the sports in the tennis to know whether I'm a, I have a potential I have a talent whether he should invest money or not. Um, so again, we were lucky to encounter this, these two people early in my career, and they convinced him that he should go ahead. So of course, he, he and my mom had to go through a lot of difficulties, uh, financially, emotionally, whichever way, 
to uh, for me to sit here and talk to you. So I, I don't forget about that. I, I actually carry it in my heart, and I'm eternally grateful. We have time for one last thing. Okay. This is your moment, of course, in your night, but since I'm Norwegian press, I have to ask you, you've uh, played Kasperud several times now and beaten him every time. He's never taken a set against you. What does he have to improve to be able to win a Grand Slam? And since you saw the Champions League final last night, who's the bigger Norwegian, Erling Haaland or Kasperud? <laughs> What I said on the court, I truly meant it. I think he's, uh, he and his family and his team are very, very nice people, uh, very respectful, very down to earth, humble, and one of the hardest working uh, players on the tour, Kasper. So he deserves his success. He's one of the most consistent players that we have in the last five years. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate for him to, to lose his third Grand Slam finals, but I'm sure this is not his last finals. So I'm, I'm, you know, he's going to answer better, you know, what he thinks he should do in order to win a slam. But it's, uh, trust me, it's not, it's not that easy, you know. Um, every slam, it, it's, it's like a, a, a different mountain to climb from the beginning, uh, because slams are the, the, the tournaments where every player dreams of playing when they're young, and so that's why everyone is extremely motivated to, to play the best tennis and make a mark in this tournament. So that's why I would say that playing in these tournaments against anybody is more challenging than playing on any other tournament, really. Um, and so I, I think he, he's got, he definitely has, a, has a, you know, no doubt that he has quality to, to win a slam. I mean, he played three finals, two in on clay, one in New York. So he's, he's very close, he's very close. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't answer to, to, to the previous question or where I didn't believe in myself. You know, I mean, I had, I had a great foundation, but um, I remember when I won my first slam and then for three years I, I didn't win another slam and I, I lost, you know, several finals and many semifinals, mostly against Nadal or Federer. And th that's where I was really doubting myself um, and whether I could do it or not, uh, because you know you get far, but then you fall on the last hurdle. And uh, and and the more times you kind of fall, the more you question everything. You know what I mean? But uh, he he seems to me that he's a kind of a guy that doesn't let the failures um, take him down. He actually learns from the failures and moves on a failure. I mean, what is failure? I mean, sorry, it's not the right expression. I mean, playing a finals of Grand Slam is incredible success. So learning from that experience will help him, I'm sure, get, get stronger and get better. Because as I said, you know, he, discipline and um, dedication is not an issue with him. So you need to, that, those are the core values and words that you need to have in order to uh, try to reach the highest goals.